When we look at the causes of falls in older adults, it's divided into extrinsic and intrinsic. Extrinsic are the things that happen to us outside. We trip over something, uh, we come up to the stairs, it's not well lit, and we fall. Intrinsically, we look at drugs, polypharmacy, and some specific drugs are very important. We go from there to looking at the problems with mental function. People with dementia, people who have delirium, and people with depression all have increased falls. This is most probably related to the fact that when you're not thinking well, you cannot walk and talk equally adequately at the same time. Um, after the memory problems, uh, we go on to looking at our physical ability to walk. As you get older, the falls are often less easy for people to catch. So instead of falling forward and managing to break your fall with your wrist, what happens is you tend to fall sideways or backwards. And at that time, you run into real trouble because you now fall on your hip. There are many risk factors for falls. One of the key ones is uh, having a prior fall. Also things like gait and balance problems, cognitive impairment, orthostasis, urgency, urinary urgency, uh, things like uh, lower extremity weakness, taking high risk medications or many medications, those kinds of things the primary provider can identify and in addressing those can lower the patient's risk for falling. Dual tasking is the ability to do two things at the same time. So you may have heard the old adage, can you walk and chew gum at the same time? Well, it's very similar. We ask the person to walk and do another task at the same time. It's typically a little bit more complex than chewing gum. We may ask them questions such as, can you count backwards by seven from 100? or have them throw a ball back and forth or do something that takes a little bit more cognitive time in thinking about the tasks that they have to do in addition to walking. If they have trouble doing both at the same time, it puts them at a very high risk of falling. A simple dual task is having the person walk and then just to have a conversation with them. And there has been several studies that have shown that if somebody stops talking while walking or stops walking while talking, then that person is at an increased risk of falls. There are several tests that you can use to look at fall risk and also to look at dual tasking. So the first is walking speed. So having an older adult walk about eight feet, timing that, you can look at whether their risk of falling if they walk quickly enough for a normal older adult uh, to see if their risk of falling is increased. If you have them do that with a distraction, such as counting backwards by sevens from 100, and if that takes them twice as long to do that test, that tells you that older person has an even higher rate risk for falling. All right, so we're gonna go out in the hall and do some tests of your walking and balance. So okay. the first test is gonna be you walking and then just see how, how fast you walk on a, in your usual pace. Okay. Then we'll have you sit and do a little obstacle course test. Okay. Uh, and then we'll look at your balance. Right. Okay, Great. so just do your best. Okay. And uh, um, the tests are timed, so I will tell you if I want you to go as quickly as you can, but I want you to be safe. So don't, don't push it to where you think you might fall. Sure. Okay? Understand. All right. I'm gonna have you walk down to the end of the hall to that chair just at your normal pace, just like you're walking to the store. So when I say go, I'll have you begin. Ready and go. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna do make this a little bit tricky. Okay. So I'm gonna have you walk down to uh, the end of that hall, right back again. But as you're walking, I want you to count backwards from 100 by sevens. Mm. So 193 while you're walking, okay? Wow. So when I say go, you start walking and t take, again, take your time as you feel comfortable and start with 100 and okay. then count backwards by sevens. Okay. That's Ready five. and go. Okay, 93, uh, okay. 86, 79, 72, uh, 60.
The get up and go test helps you look at all aspects of an older adult's gait and balance. So they get up from a chair, walk about eight feet, turn and return, and then sit down in a chair. So that time test, if a person takes more than 12 seconds, that increases a higher risk for falling. If you do that test with dual tasking with the distractions, such as counting backwards by sevens from 100, and it takes them twice as long to do that test, that indicates a very high risk of falling. Okay, for this test, what I'm going to have you do from sitting down, I'm going to have you stand up, walk around about to here, turn around, walk back down to the chair, and sit back down. Okay. So I'm going to time you so, again, go as quickly as you can, but being safe. Okay, okay. so you see that blue spot sure. on the floor. So you go past that, turn around, come back, and sit back down. Very good. Okay, ready, and go. All right, I'm going to have you do the same thing again, only this time counting again backwards from 100 by 7s. So standing up, walking around, coming back, and sitting back down. Okay. All right, ready, and go. Okay. 100. 93. Okay. 86. Okay. Uh, 70. Uh, I couldn't think. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. You weren't that much longer, just a little bit longer doing the counting, so very good. The one leg stand is really a very good test of balance. Um, it's difficult for many older adults, but it will tell you if they have a balance deficit. So having an older person stand on one leg, see how long they can do that. You can also have the older person close their eyes, and if they have more difficulty maintaining a one leg stand, that tells you they have more issues with their vestibular system and they need their vision to help them in terms of preventing a fall. If one does uncover a problem on dual tasking and you feel your person is at high risk of having a fall, then it's important to, number one, evaluate the person for any other underlying cause, such as a medication issue, another uh, medical problems such as diabetes or something that can affect the muscles. And it's important to also get other professionals involved, particularly physical and occupational therapists who can help the patient with gait, balance training, and also how to adjust things in the home to reduce the risk of falling. The older person who has some weakness, muscle weakness or balance difficulties, the more they can stay active, exercise, and keep their strength up, those things will help them prevent a fall. So getting to an exercise program in their community, uh, particularly something that addresses balance and falls, such as Tai Chi. There are uh, other kinds of exercise programs that older people can find in their communities. I think providers want to keep this top of mind that fall prevention is something that needs to be evaluated routinely and that you can intervene. And the earlier we intervene, uh, the more we can prevent a fall because once an older person has a fall and an injury, we often can't bring them back to the level they were before the fall.